One week ago, Todd Fisher thought his sister was on top of the world. At the top of her game, she looked beautiful. Her hair looked beautiful. She had wonderful, you know, her. she was back in shape. Carrie Fisher! She was in London promoting her latest book and preparing to come home to Los Angeles for the holidays. When was the last time you spoke to your sister? Just literally before she left England. Was she excited about this trip, this yeah, book tour? Yeah, absolutely. Well, no, she was excited about Christmas. Her favorite thing to do was to give out gifts. When it came to economics, you know, she's not ever interested in a deal, but she always had the most amazing gifts for everybody. You know, the 935 Heavy, I need the nature of the, uh, the medical emergency. But on that flight, just 15 minutes before landing, the iconic actress suffered a massive heart attack. We have an unresponsive passenger. So they're working on it right now. A mid-air medical emergency for actress Carrie Fisher. How did you hear that something had happened to Carrie on board that flight, just as it was coming into land? You know, I had a phone call from my mother's house and said that something's happened with Carrie, and, you know, so we obviously all got into high alert. Was she um, alone? She was did, never alone. Did people help her? Of course. She had amazing help, and she, you know, the, from what I understand on the airplane, you know, she had doctors right there immediately, and everything was done. You all rushed to the hospital when you got that phone call? When you got there, was Carrie there yet? Yes, Carrie was there. We thought we might be able to save her, uh, you know, and that was in, in play for a little while, but the doctor always said that it, it was, you know, high risk, and so... You know, it was not something that uh, was a, f a sure thing by any means. She's Star Wars royalty. Now Carrie Fisher is in the intensive care unit. Your mom had issued a statement saying yes. at one point that she was stable, and I think a lot of people had a lot of hope at that point. Now, what she meant by that, because I was with her, is, she, you know, she's stable in ICU. Now, I mean, being stable in ICU means you're... You're stable in ICU. You're you're still in critical condition. So that never changed. She was on life support. Yeah, she was always critical, and you know, my mother always felt that she, you know, had already sort of left the building, so to speak. That was her feelings, but that she had hope. We all have hope. My mother has great, very strong faith. She's she's a strong belief in in God, and has always talk to God in a real personal way. And that's part of what her strength was about. Did your mother have the chance at Carrie's bedside before she died to be able to gather around? Did, was the family able to have a moment? Yes, everybody had that. But at the same time, you know, things didn't need to be said or done differently. I, I was, it had all been said before and it was all in place. Nothing else needed to happen. Things happen naturally is what I'm saying. It must have been excruciating for your mother to lose your sister. It violates the order of nature to lose a child. The last few days is, that led up to the, the losing Carrie, my mother had a few moments where she was clearly distraught, but 99% of the time, she sucked it up. And then what happened that last day? I think the most important thing that happened is Carrie left. And when Carrie left, my mother had many years ago said, I don't want to attend my daughter's funeral. There was really no grief in her like you would might expect. It wasn't that she was sitting around and just unconsolable, not at all. She then said that she really wanted to be with Carrie. In she those, said that. In those precise words. And within 15 minutes from that conversation, she faded out and within 30 minutes, she technically was gone. What do you mean faded out? I mean, she started to have a stroke and she just effectively went to sleep and didn't wake up. She closed her eyes peacefully like you're going to sleep and she literally went to sleep and left. Beloved and legendary actress Debbie Reynolds has died at age 84. She willed herself to die. I'm saying that my mother, if anybody, had somehow a way to do that and I watched it happen in front of my face. What did that look like? She literally just went to sleep and left. And, you know, we obviously went through all the motions, you know, to get her, try to bring her back and all that. And we didn't know we couldn't do that. I just sat there and watched her leave. And you know what? That's what makes it okay. If it was something else, I wouldn't be okay. The fact that she's with Carrie, you know, and taking care of her, which is what she loved most. The two of them, Carrie obviously, had more needs in many ways. And my mother loved that 
helping her and watching after her and was, was brilliant at it, but also obsessed with it. And Carrie, on the other hand, was also equally obsessed with taking care of my mother. That's what the beauty of this is. The love story is uncanny. And to exit the planet, it makes Romeo and Juliet look like soft stuff. I mean, it was unbelievable. This is horrible, but it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's life, I mean, and it's, it's what they, what she wanted. And because of that, I'm, I hope we're all okay with that because that's where Debbie wanted to be. She had a will to not want to leave Carrie and, and not want to have Carrie alone. And also I think she'll be of great assistance in heaven with Carrie because Carrie's really, really tough to handle at times. And my mother was amazing. You think Carrie's making a, oh, a scene up there? <laughs> I'm sure they're all... I mean, initially, she was there for a while on her own. I'm, I'm almost thinking maybe God had a little chat with mom and said, get up here and give us a hand. Todd says mother and daughter will be buried at the famed Forest Lawn Cemetery, a California hillside full of industry royalty, from Michael Jackson to the Marx Brothers to the man who made Mickey Mouse. Will they be buried next to each other? They will be buried next to each other. And we're going to go to Forest Lawn, where her other friends are, Liberace, Betty Davis, was a great friend of my mom. They made the movie Catered Affair and became friends. Mm -hmm. And Betty's buried in the same area where Debbie's gonna go. And right on the other side of this wall is where Liberace is, who is a close friend of my mom. And his mother is also there. So it'll be a double funeral? We'll have a private funeral with mm -hmm. friends and family together, mm -hmm. which is how they would want it. And then we'll figure something out for the public. Their life is high class stuff. And these were high class broads very high class and so they deserve to be remembered and discussed in this fashion it's horrible it's beautiful it's magical they're together it's just it's beyond words it's beyond understanding but i saw it and it is what it is you can't deny it it is what it is